the campus, Arizona, looking to snap UCLA's five-game win streak. They're excited. Early on, UCLA doing fine. Ryan Hollins. Bruins trying to avoid their first Pac-10 loss. Arizona five, though, midway through first half. Channing Fry. Good follow here by Fry. 26 points, tying his career high. Also had 10 rebounds. Second half, Arizona can do no wrong. Andre Igudala up in the club. And then look again. You know, said Lute Olsen later, I believe we could not play any better than we did. Lute gets career win 5-10 at Arizona, passing Fred Anke. Andy Katz says this is Gonzaga's best team yet. The Zags, a little undermanned with injuries, and in a dogfight at the kennel with St. Mary's, E.J. Rowland for three, puts St. Mary's up by two. 46 apiece, here's a top 10 nominee. Blake Stepp, Ronnie Turioff, Turioff 19 and eight. Gonzaga up two, and then they put it away with Derek Ravio. Zags, it's just five of 13 threes, but they hit some big ones. Outscored St. Mary's 40 to 29 in the second half, and they win 75-61. Top 25 is Florida, Vandy. First half, we have a tie game. Jason Holwerda, Holwerda, a thief going the other way. Florida's problem, they turn the ball over 14 times in the first half. Billy Donovan talks about his team's turnover struggles in that first half. Billy? Our guys just didn't do a very good job passing the ball, basketball or breaking to get open as well. So that's something, something we got to correct because, as you mentioned, shot a high percentage, but 14 turnovers on the road is not good. Well, Coach, team didn't correct it because in the second half, more turnovers. David Lee strip going the other way. Corey Smith responding to a good visual, tying up the game at 40. Vandy up one later in the second half. Adrian Moss, uh-oh. Other way for Russell Lakey. Lakey, Lay-in, Commodores cruising to the victory. Florida, a season-high 24 turnovers. Let's keep it in the SEC. 24th-ranked Mississippi State visiting LSU first half. That's Lawrence Roberts over there. He's getting double teamed. Brandon Vincent is wide open. You double somebody, somebody's wide open, and they spot him. Spot the open man, Elsie. Yeah. Yeah, part of the 17-0 run. You always preach that. I do. Second half, LSU comes back. Jaime Ureta. The putback. Yet 13 LSU within one. Next possession, Daryl Mitchell is open for the right. And the Tigers have their first lead of the game, 42-40. Mississippi State answers, though. Gary Irvin for three. He had 13. And State wins 64-54. Bulldogs 14-1, 3-1 in the end. Looking to make it 13 straight wins with Tulane in town. Now, off the miss, we got an arrow on Larry O'Bannon trailing the play on defense. Here's the arrow. Knocking the ball loose for the steal. Good hustle play. Thank you. Over to Francisco Garcia. The outlet to Taquan Dean. Dean with 15 points. You know, the Cardinals scored 22 points off 23 two-lane turnovers. Here's the pass off the hands of Otis George. Look, Whitehead, 16 points for Whitehead. Second half, Louisville up 11. Dean makes it look so easy. The Louisville was just 8 of 28 from three-point range. Rick Patino's Cardinals win their 13th straight, Steve. Denny Crum's got a good team this year. Number 14, Georgia Tech hosting Maryland first half. Look at Will Bynum. Blow it up, as the kids say. For three. Hit five of seven threes later in the first. How about John Gilchrist open three, and we're tied at 28. Second half now, Gilchrist at a career-high 27. And the Terps on the road have a seven-point lead, 47 to 40. But Bynum, look at the fancy dribbling, and then a three with a hand in his face. Tech's lead is one. Then Bynum behind the back, off the glass. He had a career-high 25. Georgia Tech, its second win in three days following a two-game losing streak. 22nd-ranked Texas Tech taking on Baylor. Baylor down three. It's a game early, but R.T. Blaine, a little rusty, put back a 10, goes right over the backboard. <laughs> Whoa. That's Bears not down two. No. Win would make amends. Like there. Put Baylor up one, but late in the second half, Texas Tech wakes up at the right time. And who else does it? Who else leads the charge? The creator, Andre Emmett, who had 22 points. He was 8 of 15 from the field. Tech wins their 10th in a row. Emmett, third time all leading scorer for Tech. His mom getting down. Q's taking its 12 game winning streak into South Bend. Akeem Moore came into the game with 37 dunks. We're counting them. First half. Jerry McNamara shoots. That's Warwick from just in front of McNamara. Follows. Oh, but he's hanging on the rim. That's a technical. Oh. Yeah. Notre Dame's Torn Francis said once you give Warwick space, he goes to the bucket every time, and there he's he a is. Helicopter. Yeah, you can't give him space. Orangeman made just five of their first 16 shots, but that play ignited a 13-0 run, and they never looked back. 
Warwick, 19 points, four dunks. Syracuse, its fifth straight win over the Irish. On 12 straight, Rashad McCants. McCants scored 27 against the Huskies a year ago. McCants was feeling it, and it was feeling fine. Star Hills up 14, but UConn comes back. Ben Gordon sharing. Ten assists for Gordon and Okafor. 29 points, 13 boards. We're tied under nine and a half to go. Jack Emanuel. Look out, Okafor's there. Six blocks for Omeka. Here we go the other way. Gordon. Just three of 14 from the field, but that was impressive. Ten points for Ben. Under 8.40 to go. Off the miss by UConn. Josh Boone. Boone knocking it loose. Okafor picks it up with a finish. UConn up three. Under 3.45 to go. Tar Heels up one and they're working it working it to the hot hand is McCants Tar Heels up three under a minute 35 to play UConn up one Okafor money man UConn now up by three what a game this was I thought it was March not January Jawad Williams look who's open you can't leave McCants open ties up the game at 83 Tar Heels ball still tied 15 seconds to go and counting the top 10 nominee McCants don't tell me Rashad gets open again said McCants later big players make big shots and I wanted to do that coach Roy Williams talks about that play and Sean May's pick uh, Sean set a great screen for Rashad and uh, uh, the boy that's been criticized more than anybody other than Saddam uh, made a big time basket out there all right 6.2 seconds to go UConn a shot here Gordon bringing it up spinning away from a defender his shot no good said Gordon the play wasn't what we wanted but I got a decent look the Tar Heels hang on to break it down Dude. Second half, Justin Gray for Laurie. He had 18. Demon Deeks within three. Duke's 35-game home winning streak in jeopardy. Wake's last win at Cameron came with Tim Duncan in 97. Look at the half-court defense. Defender switch, and that leaves Daniel Ewing wide open on the wing for Laurie. Ewing had 20. Duke up six. Then some defense. Sean Dockery, the steal here. J.J. Redick, the finish. 23 for Redick. And Duke will win 84-72. Coach K's team 14-1, 4-0 in the ACC in sole possession of first. Georgia's Dennis Felton. He knows what it takes at Rupp Arena. Let's flash back. November 15, 2001. Felton's only other visit to Rupp as the coach of Western Kentucky. Hilltoppers with a big win, 64 to 52. Let's go back to Saturday, shall we? Kentucky coach Tubby Smith going for win number 300. Second half, Kentucky down two. Planning out strategy. It's Antoine Barber. He's fouled hard by Steve Newman. It's intentional. Newman. Barber down on the court. Some trash talking. Teams had to be separated. Uh, not a single punch was thrown. But Tubby Smith gives Barber an earful. Later in the second half, dogs up on Rashad Wright. White, 20 points. Dogs up 42-38. Rashad Wright. Somebody called the fire marshal. Dogs up eight. Wright. Outside, inside, the man was a force. So Georgia shocks Kentucky as Tubby is denied win number 300. Nice Let's, lead in. Thank you. Hey. That was I, a big help. I'll tell you something, All Steve. Right. Rob yeah. Little looking large, putting Stanford up eight. They were up 11 when this happened. Josh Childress. Got Sweet large hair. in the finish. Stanford up 13. You know, as a matter of fact, he does. <laughs> On the break again, Chris Hernandez, the Justin Davis. Everything is huge and big with Stanford. The hair, the jams, and then Hernandez. On the break again, and he doesn't miss from there, does he? Look at that. Look at the score. Stanford takes care of business. Number six, St. Joe's, best start in school history, 14-0, but on the ropes at Xavier, early first half, Jameer Nelson, the steal, and he goes in for two, make it three. 11 of 18 from the floor, he had 28, but the story here, Delonte West, the pull-up jumper. These guys probably are the best backcourt in America, he's two for two. West, the drive and the finish, he's four for four, shooting to this point. West, open for Lauren. How about six for six, second half, eight for eight. Hawks winless on Xavier's court since 73, but West is on fire, 10 of 10. What's a point? school and conference record, 12 for 12. Oh. Six of six from the line, a career high 33. St. Joe's, 15 and 0, could be as high as fourth in the polls this week.
Seventh ranked Cincinnati, 12 and up. Coming into a visit from TCU, Bob Huggins Bearcats averaging a 25 point per game margin of victory. Jason Maxiel and Nucleus Smith collide. Maxiel limps off with an ankle injury. He did return them. Later in the first, Nick Williams bounced past to Maxiel, who's back. Cincinnati would lead by as much as 37. James White to Maxiel, who blows the bunny. White to Maxiel again, and this time he throws down. He had 15. Final minute, Huggins upset that his team let a 37-point lead slip away, takes one out on the official, gets a tee, but the Bearcats get to 13-0. Coach Jamie Dixon and his undefeated Panthers, winners of 36 straight home games, entering Saturday's contest against Rutgers. There's Larry Fitzgerald, winner of the Walter Camp Award, honored at halftime. Pit up by six, second half, Marcus Webb. Top of the key, Webb had seven points. Panthers up by three. Scarlet Knights going a 10-zip run. Ricky Shields with two three-pointers during this stretch. And you saw them both. Less than eight minutes to play second half. Rutgers by four. Jaron Brown takes care of things. 19 points for Brown. That's seven above his average. And then Chris Taft, the uh, six-foot, 10-inch freshman for Pitt. 17 points, 12 boards, Pitt by one. Two minutes to go. Panthers leading in control, Jaron Brown. He had Pitt's only two three-pointers, and Pitt finds a way to beat Rutgers again. Missouri against 13th-ranked Oklahoma. Kelvin Sampson and the Sooners have won 45 of the last 46 home games. Second half, Oklahoma in control, Drew Lavender. Helping the Sooners take a 12-point lead, but Missouri fights back. Desperate for a quality win on the road. Oklahoma up two, Trayvon Bryant. Bryant 5 of 7 from the field, 12 points. Missouri goes up one. We got a tie game, though. Sooners looking for the win here in regulation. Lavender just 3 of 14 from the field, so we go to the extra period. And in overtime, the big boys, the seniors, take over. A.J. Arthur Johnson. Oh, baby. 16 points, 11 boards, 6 of 12 from the field. Tigers still up 4 when this happens. I mentioned the seniors taking over. Ricky Paulding, 6 and 9 from the field, 23 points. Missouri with a shocker at Norman. 16th ranked Texas hosting Nebraska. Yankee legend Roger Clemens taking the game in. <laughs> Less than a minute and a half to go. That's Jake Muehlheisen. Look at him trying to feel out the defense, just looking for a spot. A scene goes around a double screen, almost a full circle. He had nine points, and Nebraska's up by three. Next possession, Brian Boddicker for three. Big shot, ties it at 61. Final 10 seconds. Royale, Ivy, top 10 nominee, the step back. Huge shot. He had 13 Longhorns up by two. Nebraska gets a last chance, and it's Muleheisen. This one for the win. Bit of a Christian Leitner deal, but eh, off the back. Huskers hold Texas to nearly 30 points below their scoring average, but the Longhorns survive. Hey, that's nice, Steve. But how about 12th ranked Kansas visiting Texas A&M? And we're talking J.R. Giddens. Giddens, Giddy. I bet that has never been used that's before. That's nice. Five or seven from the You're field, 14 Smith. points. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Giddens, four or five from three-point range. More of Giddens. Can you take it from the wing? Kansas up 10. Less than six minutes to play second half. Keith Langford. One of six steals by Kansas. Whew, that was huge. 21 points for Langford. Closing seconds of regulation. J.R. Giddens, a monster. Kansas wins. They shoot 51%. Panthers 18-0, most wins in Division I, visiting the Mall in Hartford. Huskies trying to rebound from Saturday's dramatic loss in Chapel Hill. First half to Lee Brown to Denham Brown. Denham Brown, 8 of 12 from the floor, spots up for three. Denham Brown, 20 for the game, had a big first half. Jay Billis, your thoughts. Denham Brown is instant offense for the UConn Huskies. He can post up and he can hit from deep. He had 12 points in the first half, 5 of 7. His aggressiveness, important for UConn. Huskies up 39-32 at halftime. Second half, Carl Krauser open for third. He hit four of seven threes. Panthers within one. Here's UConn. Talik Brown will miss, and Emeka Okafor will not. Oh, Emeka Okafor. Let's listen in. Okafor, 11 points, seven boards, five blocks. Krauser goes right around Okafor there, left handy at 24. Pittsburgh up one. Final two minutes, Talik Brown, the runner. Eight for Brown, 64-63, Connecticut. Just over a minute left, Okafor, the miss. Look at freshman Josh Boone, go get it. He had 10, and UConn's lead is three. 17 seconds left, Krauser inside. Blocked by Okafor, Talik Brown would be fouled. Brown, 7.8 to go, one and one. Blank. 
Jamie Dixon wants a timeout. He's down three. Three seconds left here. Freshman Antonio Graves, look at this, left wide open for the tie. Connecticut hands Pittsburgh its first loss of the year, 68-65. So, Bill Raftery. Oklahoma taking on Texas Tech. Bobby Knight, jovial. To the action, first half, Andre Emmett. Emmett, air Seven ball, but it's tipped and it goes out of bounds, and it's ruled Sooner's ball. But then they reverse the call, and Kelvin Sampson is what? What is up? He's hopping mad. As for Knight, he's admiring the work of the opposing coach. I think Sampson furious, and he doesn't get a technical, though. Is Knight getting outdone in his own arena? Top 10 nominee coming up. Ronald Ross, no. Joseph Works, oh, yeah. Texas Tech up 27-19 at the break. They were up 17, second half. Jabari Brown, all sorts of trouble. The Sooners shot just 33%. Giles ahead to Emmett, who doesn't miss from there. He had 21. Just over a minute later, loose ball here, and uh, Jarius Jackson is going to find something he likes. Yeah. Sooners lose their four straight. First time that's happened since 99. Hey, Bobby Knight, what about your team's momentum? Pretty good, huh? Mark Twain must have written about momentum at some point in his career because you guys have picked up that word momentum, you know, and, and, and uh, we could be as different tomorrow uh, as, as uh, black and white <clears throat> or as apples and watermelon. I mean, I, you just have to continue to be focused and continue to play as well as you can. Well, thanks, Coach, for that insight. But, you know, what's happening right now is momentum. Texas Tech has now won 11 straight games since their only two losses of the season. And it ties for the fourth longest win streak in school history.